Hello guys and welcome to another video for the Blender Game Engine. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to create some uh, semi-realistic or stylized textures for your games uh, in the Blender Game Engine. This video is more to give you guys uh, some detail on how to create textures from scratch in Blender. Uh, now I'm not going to be going into uh, in the depths of texture painting because I want to do a separate tutorial for that. Today I'm more going to be showing you how to make seamless, usable textures that you could, you know, sell online or use in, you know, various hundreds of various game projects. Uh, things that'll be applicable anywhere, uh, like brick walls or grass textures, things like that. Um, so I, would, I just more want to show you guys techniques that'll really help you guys create your textures in your game projects, hopefully. Uh, if nothing else, maybe you'll learn one thing that you didn't know. So, uh, anyway, let's begin. So I'm going to be creating a basic brick texture, and I'm going to be go uh, going through how to create the diffuse, the normal, the specular, all that. Uh, and I'm going to be teaching you guys uh, about some different techniques along the way. So I'm going to start off by adding a cube, or sorry, a plane, and a <clears throat> sun lamp. So take a drink of water here, my throat's a little... Okay. And we can duplicate this plane here, and I'm going to subdivide it a couple of times. And this essentially is going to be uh, our our brick, our, our, our brick layout. So we need to start off by actually selecting some bricks. Um, uh, so if I go into face select here, we can see that this object has um, eight uh, faces on either side. Each half going up and down, so 16 in total. So it's a 16 by 16 um, face. So what we can do um, is have these bricks be one. These can be one. And maybe these two bricks here will actually just be one. Here, actually, it will go like this. <clears throat> like this, and then these will be meshed together in the in the last product, uh, and then we'll do something kind of similar like that. Here, here, yeah. Uh, the thing I want to avoid is uh, you don't want this row of bricks and this row of bricks to be the same uh, because you might do that and then get to it later and then realize that uh, it's not at all, um, you know, it doesn't it doesn't look the way it should. That's what I'm trying to say. <clears throat> So, I think that looks pretty good. And then again, we, we want to make sure that these don't line up. So, because uh, you, you can already see um, there's one spot where it is lining up and it looks a little weird already. Um, and especially with seamless textures, that will, that will look really weird uh, in the end result. Okay, so now that we've got this, we can... I'm actually going to move this one. I'm sorry, it's gonna bother me. Okay. Now what we can do is essentially grab all these faces and extrude them uh, by pressing Alt-E and then individual faces. Uh, now we wanna make sure we grab... Okay, let's uh, see what we got something finicky here. Uh, so we wanna make sure we grab these here and create a face and these here and create a face now keep in mind we're just doing this to bake a texture so uh, the faces don't have to be 100% um, or the geometry doesn't have to be 100% uh, perfect uh, now what we can do is alt E individual faces and then once you have this uh, we basically uh, want to bevel it so we'll just give that a nice little bevel uh, but what you can see is uh, the edges of some of them our beveling that we don't want. So what we want to do is uh, grab our edge select here and deselect the edges that would actually be connecting. So these guys here uh, all connect. Um, those ones, those ones, those ones, those ones will connect. Um, Then what we can do is press bevel, and we'll get the result we want. 
where this will um, not affect the sides or the edges, so it'll still look seamless in the final result. So if I grab this and move it over some, you'll see it's seamless, it meshes. So uh, what we can do from here um, is add some detail to this. So I'm going to show you guys a couple different techniques to add detail to stuff. Uh, so, um, my first and favorite is a very simple technique, uh, it's the displace modifier. Uh, what I'm going to do is essentially uh, grab this and subdivide it a couple times um, and add a subdivision surface modifier, well, maybe not, uh, we'll add a displace modifier and we're going to add uh, a new and then we'll just make this a cloud texture. And we can go back here and uh, change the influence of this. Hmm. This isn't looking exactly how I want it to. You know what, we'll do this a different way in a bit. Uh, I'll show you guys what I, what I want to do with that. Um, okay, so I'm gonna show you guys how to add some detail to this though. Uh, so one way to do it is with dynamic typology. So we can go over to sculpt mode here and turn on Dino Typo. And you can see. Okay. There we go. Um, I have this brush here. Now, essentially, what dynamic typology is, is it'll create geometry where it needs to based off of where you're sculpting. So, for example, if we want to add some chips to this corner here, uh, we can do that just by you know, going through and adding a little bit of a chip or a, a nick or something. So, uh, I feel like I've, you know, given these rocks enough of a beating, I said these bricks enough of a beating. Uh, so if you wanted to go through on a second pass, you could just come down here to the detail size and bump that down, and then you could uh, really get in small here and uh, write some stuff. So, uh, you know, you could really, really get in, in small, do some small small details. Alright, so now that we have that, uh, we can basically take this uh, beautiful high-res uh, rock that we have and bake it down to this uh, lower res image here, or this lower resolution plane. Uh, so what we're going to want to do is first unwrap this plane and give it a new texture here, just called bricks. And we're going to start off by grabbing this object, uh, shift selecting uh, our bottom object, there we go, and uh, select it to active and bake the normals. Simple as that. Now we can save this image. And we can also do one for the ambient occlusion. Okay. Now what I like to do um, is grab a grunge map. So if you don't know what CG Texture is, you're missing out. Head over to cgtextures.com and look up the word grunge and you will find literally hundreds of images that you can use in your game projects. So we can grab any of these and uh, download it. I'm just gonna plop it into here. And I'm essentially uh, gonna grab my high res image and uh, this, this is what I was kind of talking about before, where we're going to bake all this detail, like some grunge detail, onto our normal map using a grunge map. 
so what we can do uh, is unwrap this image first, so we'll just bounce. Okay, there we go. Uh, now that we have that, we can apply our grunge texture, um, which you can see it applies if we have that. Uh, but we don't want it to uh, be influenced by the color, we want it to be uh, influenced by the normal, by 0.1 or so. Oops. Down. Uh, yeah, so it doesn't need to be, it doesn't really need to be that high at all, uh, to be honest. That's pretty good. <clears throat> I would even turn it down slightly more. Okay, and there you go. And just like that, you see we have all these little nicks and scratches that look a lot better than mine, honestly, because they're real. They're real, you know, details that are from the photo. Okay, so. If we go ahead and apply this texture on our normal map, uh, actually let's just go ahead and apply the normal map first and just see how much the normal map affects it. Yeah, okay, there we go. So that's just with the normal map, that's pretty good. Uh, you know, there's a lot of detail in there, and if we were to, uh, you know, scale this plane up a bit and, uh, scaled up in edit mode as well. You can see in the UV mode that that is completely seamless. We can barely you know, see the edges on the uh, on the texture. There's a few spots where you know we did there's a bit of a miss but we can go in and fix that later. Uh, so that's pretty good for you know, 15 minutes of work. Uh, and then what we can do is see what it looks like with our uh, ambient occlusion. So that looks a lot better but you can see it looks a little shiny for some reason. Uh, so uh, there is a way to fix this shininess, and it's uh, called specular maps. So specular maps essentially take the way um, the light reacts, and it calculates the lighting in the scene and fakes the way uh, the texture should react with the lighting, I believe, is the best way to um, describe that. So essentially it uses dark values to calculate um, spots that wouldn't reflect as much and lighter values to calculate spots that would. Uh, so we can essentially uh, do a couple of things here. First off, I want to create my um, main uh, texture. I mean, there's a couple of things I'm going to do. Uh, first off, there's some things I can do just with this one as, uh, as is. Uh, like we can head into image mode, uh, brightness and contrast, and turn up the contrast a little bit and the brightness down a little bit just to give that more of a pop and then we can uh, overlay this grunge uh, that we have onto it so it looks a little better and then I, you see I've duplicated a layer here and I'm just going to blur this layer with the Gaussian blur uh, and screen it over my original image uh, with lower opacity All right. And we can merge these layers together, merge these layers together, and uh, I'm just gonna turn the brightness down a little bit and give it a little, oh, there we go, a little gloomier, so that's good. So we can go ahead and save this as our diffuse. Alright, you'll have to excuse me guys, my Photoshop is crashing. Either way, we can bring our image back in here and uh, create our uh, specular map by going over the curves and bumping up the darkness and bumping up the lightness. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is uh, adjust this so it's more black and white, but I want to leave uh, a little bit of some of that color in there. Some of the reds and stuff like that. I don't get those red. Yeah. Okay. So now that we have that, we can save it. And uh, apply it. So uh, you can see kind of what that does. Uh, is basically makes the lighting a little more realistic. So 
that looks pretty good for you know 20 minute uh, 20 minute brick texture. Uh, anyway, if you like this kind of tutorial, guys, um, let me know because uh, you know I'll basically upload whatever you guys want to see. So let me know what you guys want me to make, and uh, I'm down to show you guys how to make it. Um, if you guys like this kind of stuff though, with the texturing and all that, let me know. I'm glad to to show you guys how to do lots of this type of stuff. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, have a good one. Bye bye.